Hello, hello! So today we're going to take a look at ILS landings again, but in a bit more depth. If you haven't seen my basic tutorial on ILS landing systems, I'd recommend checking that out first so you can get a basic understanding of what an ILS is and what it does. For those of you who already know, let's continue. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is something you've probably already heard of, and that is the decision height. So what is the decision height and how does it relate to ILS landings? So you know that ILS systems allow a pilot to approach a runway in bad weather or bad visibility. Well the decision height is the point at which the pilot must have visual contact with the runway to safely touch down and complete the landing. Alternatively, larger airports may have an array of lights which extend beyond the end of the runway. If a pilot can see these lights at the decision height, that also counts as visual confirmation and allows a pilot to complete the landing. Now, if the pilot cannot see the lights or the runway at the decision height, they have to perform a missed approach procedure, also known as a go-around. Now, you may have also heard the terms approaching minimums and minimums being used by pilots, or even being called out by a flight computer during an approach. This is just the same thing as decision height. So how do you know what the decision height is? Well, that depends on the complexity of the ILS systems. You have three categories of ILS systems, and each one has a unique set of rules that pilots have to abide by. So let's have a look at these categories, starting with the most simple one. So the first category is a category 1 ILS. So Cat 1s have a minimum decision height of 200 feet so the pilot has to decide whether it's safe to land at 200 feet or higher above the runway. Now another rule they have is to meet a minimum runway visual range. So this is the distance along the runway that the pilot can see, which is important so he or she can see the markings on the runway. The default runway visual range for CAT-1 system is 1,800 feet. Now there are a couple of exceptions. Some airports are allowed to have a range of 1,200 feet. The other exception is that in, if an aircraft is flying single crew, by that I mean with only one pilot, then the range is increased to 2,600 feet. Moving on to category 2 now, the decision height for these systems needs to be between 100 and 200 feet, and the runway visual range needs to be 1,000 feet or higher. Now for category 3 systems, these are actually divided into subcategories as well. Don't ask why, I have no idea. But the first category is a category 3A system. These need a decision height of between 50 and 100 feet, and a runway visual range of 600 feet. Category 3B systems have a decision height of 0 to 50 feet, and a runway visual range of only 150 feet. And then finally, Category 3C systems do not require a decision height or a runway visual range at all. Now, interestingly enough, I was unable to find any airports which allow a Category 3C procedure, because essentially this would allow a plane to land completely blind, like zero visibility, you cannot see your hand in front of your face type weather. So the reason that airports don't operate with this category of approach is because a plane would land and the visibility would be so bad that the pilots would be unable to see the taxiways. So what they would need to do is to stop the plane on the runway and then tow it back to a gate. So rather than have the airport go through that hassle, it makes more sense for the airport to just temporarily close until the visibility improves. But anyway, you can see there that the ILS, as the ILS category increases, it allows a plane to land in more severe visibility. It's also worth mentioning that a plane needs to have complementary hardware to allow it to fly a higher category approach. For example, a Cessna 172 can fly a category 1 approach, but not a category 3. This is because a category 3 needs extra hardware in the plane, such as a radio altimeter and a flight computer. Just a couple of brief examples there. So hopefully that opened your eyes a little more into the world of ILS systems and procedures. My next tutorial will be looking at a specific type of landing procedure called a DME arc. Now I'm not sure yet when I'll have that out, but that's definitely going to be the next tutorial video. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, take care out there, and I'll catch you later.